Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the studio. I will be putting up videos dealing with some of the concepts and techniques that I use. These videos will be more in depth explaining the particulars of one tool, one technique or one concept that I use to make something very difficult a little bit easier. This week's video will be all about plumb line, how I use it and what I use it for. If you want to learn from me how to sculpt or perhaps just support the channel, then check out my Patreon page. There's a link in the description below. Also, subscribe and hit the little bell next to the red subscribe button to get notified whenever a new video comes out. You might have to pause the video every now and then just to catch some of the pictures, so keep that in mind. If they pass by too fast, just hit the pause button and, and take a second look. So, what is a plumb line? The plumb line is pretty simple. It's something heavy at the end of a flexible line so that when suspended in space, it is perfectly vertical or plumb. The plumb line is essentially a tool to help make vertical measurements, making sure that said measurement is perfectly vertical. So the reason I use the plumb line and not just a straight tool is that with the plumb line I can be 100% sure that my measurement is vertical and therefore my figure will be end up being balanced when taking these measurements. With a tool in hand there is a risk of holding the tool slightly crooked for example and often enough, my tool isn't long enough to cover the entire sculpture. Now this obviously depends a little bit on how far back from your sculpture your space allows you to go and how big your sculpture is. Many people I know do not use the plumb line, because a tool with a straight edge pretty much serves the same purpose. I, however, find that the plumb line eliminates many of my mistakes and allows me to do the measurements once or twice and it gets rid of a lot of double checking that I would have to do if I use a tool. So, it speeds up my process a little bit, which is why I use it. Now, this brings me to what I use the plumb line for, and there are many things actually, but it's in the beginning when balancing your figure that this tool really comes into its own. And this also pertains very specifically to PT part 1, which you can watch if you follow the link in the top right corner. Early on in the process, there's a couple of things I'm concerned with. A good, accurate centerline that's placed well on the armature and the balance of the figure. Now these two elements must work together. Let's begin with making sure the immovable core of my armature is covered in clay and that my centerline is placed well so that there is equal distribution of clay on either side. Most of these pictures, by the way, is obviously a little bit further along in the process, but here you can see where the core of the armature is inside my sculpture. It's pretty close to the center, which allows for equal distribution of clay on either side. I do rough measurements to figure out where the pit of the neck goes, the pit of the neck being the end of my center line, the top end of my center line, and the pit of the neck is, is right here, at the top of the chest, where the chest and the neck meet. I triangulate its position doing this measurement, the overall height of the figure from the base. This measurement from one pelvic point, also known as the aces, and this measurement from the other pelvic point. Then the overall length of the sternum or the breastbone. then the bottom of the breastbone to aces number one and then aces number two 
and I use all these measurements to have many sources confirm my suspicion. None of these are gonna be 100% accurate by the way, with the exception of the length of the sternum. And all it really does, it, give, it gives me an idea of where to place the pit of the neck. The pit of the neck can definitely be moved, but at least now it won't need to move a lot, hopefully. It's important to note that there's a lot of other things that go into getting it even to this stage. I have measured the overall height of the figure before making the armature, making sure that things would work out, or at least seemingly would work out, before adding any clay at all. But now, with my center line placed well on the armature, it's finally time for us to use the plumb line and balance the figure. Again, it's very important that you all know that all the things I establish now is, is still subject to change. Hopefully, if my model doesn't move and I establish them well, there will be minimal adjustments needed. But I'm always open to change and improvement if it needs to happen. Now, hopefully it won't, and so far it seems to have been working out okay. I'm not copying my model exactly and I'm definitely taking a few liberties with this sculpture but I find that this technique can help you so you won't have to be chasing the model the entire time. Some chasing of the model's position is obviously necessary especially in the beginning but often you have to set yourself up well structurally and then apply the model's features to your structurally sound setup. Otherwise I find that you can end up chasing an ever-changing moving model forever and never end up with a finished product. Each decision made on your sculpture is made at one point in time, yet every decision must work together at the same time in the end. And so your sculpture is kind of an amalgamation of many different moments in time, yet they all have to work together at the same time. And this is really where structure comes in. And Soon I'll make a video explaining structure as, as best as I can, and the way I use it. So now it's time to take measurement that we've been talking about with my plumb line, and to figure out the balance of the fig. And just so you know, this is really what the video is about. So I start off with the front view. Because my center line is placed more or less where I want it on the armature, I won't move that to fit the balance of the figure. What I'll do instead is that I'll adjust the flexible leg armature so it sits underneath the pit of the neck, which is what the measurement with my plumb line shows me, is that the pit of the neck and the ankle are in line, more or less. Usually if the model is in a contraposto, meaning most of his weight is on one leg, which is the case here, the pit of the neck will line up with the stand leg ankle. Now, if it's the inside or the outside of the ankle, that changes from model to model and pose to pose. So you have to check with your plumb line to make sure. I do the same with the back view, just to double check. Obviously it should be the same here as, as on the front, unless I've made a crucial, crucial error. On the back view, however, because there is no pit of the neck in the back, obviously, I line it up with the C7. A vertebra which is usually very visually apparent, at least on most people and definitely on my model. If it's not very easy to see in visual, the trapezius or the neck muscle will point directly to its location, right here. Then I do both side views. And here the balance is somewhat different and it really depends on the pose, but in this case the stand leg ankle seems to line up well with the C7. And so now my sculpture is balanced and the stand leg is placed where it needs to be placed in accordance with my model. I also at this point check where the center line passes through the plumb line, especially around the pelvis. This way I can double check if the plumb line and the center line seems to make sense with each other. And in this case they do. So nothing has gone horribly wrong and I can proceed with the project knowing that I'm set up well structurally.
Another useful thing, at least when you're starting out, is to note where things are in relationship to the plumb line. Look here how the plumb line passes along the inside of the knee and how far to the left the thigh above the knee sits. Now this tells us something about the tilt of the stand leg, the gesture of the stand leg. It comes from the outside of the body and travels into the center at the ankle to line up with the plumb line. You can also use the plumb line to help you see negative spaces. This can help you place things in space correctly. Having this tool and using it in combination with measurements and visual observa observation is, is really useful. And it can help you discover some things you didn't expect about your model that you can then add to your sculpture. For me a lot of this stuff is, is now somewhat ingrained and I don't need to discover all of it. But it's useful for a beginner and even to double check things that you struggle with. Always double and triple source your questions if possible. Having several tools in your toolbox to check and double check the same thing is always very useful. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did I encourage you to check out my Patreon page. I give feedback and critiques on people's work and we talk about whatever you need help with in your sculpting endeavors. There are several rewards, one of them being the maquette for this very sculpture. So check it out, the link is in the description below. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for a new video next Thursday. Subscribe and hit the bell to be notified whenever a new video comes out. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and share with your friends and family. It helps me out a lot getting the videos out to people. Thank you for watching, stay creative, and see you in the next one.